Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today, we will start with a quote from the one and only Mr. Tony Robbins. Quote, beliefs have the power to create and the power to destroy. And human beings have the awesome ability to take any experience of their lives and create a meaning that either disempowers them or one that can literally save their lives. Think about that. Hey everyone, I'm Coach Molly and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, stick around and take a chance on pushing yourself forward. At Three Pines Leadership, we're devoted to helping you change the world. Twice a week, I release videos and podcasts with bite-sized motivation to help you set your intentions for the day and to help you get into the right mindset for success. If you're ready, let's get into it. Today, we're going to have a chat about limiting beliefs, behaviors, and statements. Limiting beliefs are those which constrain us in some way. Just by believing them, we do not think, we don't say, and we don't do the things that they inhibit. And in doing so, we greatly impoverish our lives. We may have beliefs about rights or duties, abilities, permissions, and so on. Limiting beliefs are often about our, ourselves and our self-identity. The beliefs may also be about other people or about the world in general and how things work. In any case, they all limit us. So you can have I do or I don't statements. So we may define ourselves by what we do or what we do not do. I mean, I might say that I'm an accountant, which means I don't do marketing and I shouldn't even think about doing it because consequently I'm going to fail to sell any of the services I try and sell. Another common limiting belief is around how we judge ourselves. We think I don't deserve. And so we do not expect to seek things. We can also have I can't statements where we often have limiting self images of what we can and can't do. If I think I can't sing, then I will never ever try or go to a, or go to singing lessons to improve my ability. I just won't do it. This is the crux of many I can't statements is that we believe our abilities are fixed and that we can't learn, we can't grow, we can't change. We don't believe in the plasticity of our identities. We also have I must or I mustn't statements. So we're bound by our values, our norms and laws and some other rules that constrain what we must and, and must not do. However, not all of these are mandatory and some are distinctly limiting. If I think I must clean the house every day, then this robs me of time that might be spent doing things that are more productive. We also, we also have I am or I am not statements. The verb to be is a quite little pernicious little thing. And as we think I am, we may also think I am not or I cannot. So for example, we may think I am an artist and so conclude that we can never be any good at mathematics or we must not soil our hands with manual work. Either or, we've limited ourselves to those, all of those possibilities. I am thinking assumes that we cannot change. It assumes that we are fixed in our identities. And whether I think I am intelligent or I am not intelligent, either belief may stop me from seeking to learn. I am also leads to generalizations. For example, when you say I'm stupid, that means all of me is all of stupid and all of stupid is all of me. A better framing of this is to connect the verb to the individual act, such as that was a stupid thing to do. When coupled with our values, we get beliefs about whether a person is right or wrong or good or bad. And we have this black and white thinking. The other statements are others will or others are. Just as we have limiting beliefs about where ourselves, we can also have limiting beliefs about other people. These can limit us in so many ways. If we think others are more capable or more superior, then we're not really likely to challenge them. 
If we see them as selfish, we may not ask for their help. We often guess what others are thinking based on our theory of mind and beliefs about them. These guesses are often wrong. And with that, we may believe that someone doesn't like us, when in reality they have no particular opinion or they might even think that we're rather nice. From our guesses at their thoughts, we can deduce their likely actions, which can of course be completely wrong. Faced with this evidence, it's surprising how many still hold onto those original limiting beliefs. We can also think about limiting beliefs and how the world works around us. Beyond the limiting beliefs mentioned earlier, there can be all kinds of beliefs about how the world works, from laws of nature to the property of materials. This can lead to anything from the beliefs that all dogs will bite to the idea that airplane travel is dangerous. So check those beliefs. So today I challenge you to look for the limiting beliefs that you've built around you. And once you've identified those beliefs, you can begin to rewrite them, to untie them, to retie them, and to rewrite yourself into empowering narratives. Take charge of your life, but most importantly, get out of your own way. Well, that's it for this episode, my friends. Remember, I love you and be excellent to each other. Until next time, mwah!